thanks for having me. I am Brandon Williams, and it has been roughly nine months since we announced Git Protocol v2 on Google's open source blog. I'm going to give a quick deep dive into what we did to accomplish this and what it means for future changes to the uh, Git Wire protocol. But first, some background. When I say Git protocol or wire protocol, I'm referring to the network protocol that is used to fetch from or push to remote repositories. Git has built-in support for three different transports, the anonymous Git protocol, SSH, and HTTP. All of uh, Git's wire protocol is framed in, a, in terms of a sequence of packet lines, where a packet line is a four-byte uh, length followed by a, some payload. Uh, to start, let's take a brief look at the original wire protocol and see what motivated us to find a reason to transition to a new protocol. So when you type git fetch origin master, regardless of the transport you're using, you're requesting that the remote server launches a git upload pack process for you to communicate with. If you're using SSH transport, you'd get something like this, where Git would SSH to the remote server and then execute git upload pack with a single argument, the path to the remote repository. You'd then immediately get a response back from the remote with what is known as a ref advertisement. A ref advertisement uh, is a listing of all the branches and tags that are stored on the remote. Each ref is sent in its own packet line and includes the ref's hash followed by the ref's name. The very first reference that's sent is a little bit special in that it has some hit information hidden behind a null byte. These are capabilities or extensions that have been added uh, to the protocol over the years. And they're hidden behind a null byte because in C, strings are null terminated, which means that old Git clients will happily ignore any information past a null byte. But newer servers will know to look for it. So then the client then uses this advertisement as a menu to pick which commits it, commits it wants to fetch from. So even though we're only interested in the master branch, you notice that the server sends us everything. This ends up being kind of pretty inefficient, especially for, uh, for larger repositories like Chrome, Chromium, which have over a million branches or tags, which could potentially result in tens or hundreds of megabytes that get sent to you and then subsequently ignored. So in order to implement a protocol v2, to solve some of these inefficiencies, we needed to find a way to transition from the current protocol to a new protocol version. So some of the hurdles with doing this is that there's a single hard requirement that we have to remain backward compatible, meaning that new clients and old servers and old clients and new servers should remain able to interoperate without failure. So we needed to find a way to send a little bit of extra information along with that first initial request uh, that would be ignored by older servers, but newer servers would know to look for it. The other requirement is that this bit of information needs to be sent in all three of Git's built-in transports. Thankfully, for two of the three, it's pretty easy. For HTTP, we can simply send an ad a additional header. In SSH, you can set an environment variable. But for the anonymous Git transport, it's a little bit more complicated than that. A request using the anonymous Git transport looks something like this. It's a packet line that includes the name of the service you are, you are requesting, you want to have run, and a path to the repository. And then back in 2006, there was support for uh, more parameters that were added that were hidden behind a null byte. This allowed you to add host information. Unfortunately, when this was implemented, there was a bug that was introduced, which uh, as you can see, the loop control variable that's iterating through all the extra parameters is only ever updated if the extra parameter is a host parameter. So if you included anything else, the server would end up spinning in an infinite loop, which you don't want. The bug was eventually found and fixed back in 2009 in the following way. The loop was changed to an if statement, and then there was an extra check made at the end to disallow any request that included parameters other than a host parameter. So if I structured a request like I have up here to include a version equal to parameter as an extra parameter hidden behind a null byte, it wouldn't work as older servers would either end up in an infinite loop or newer servers would flat out reject this. But what if we hide our version information behind two null bytes? <laughs> 
So if you take a closer look at the bounds checking that are done with these if statements, you'll notice that it only checks for the first parameter, which isn't an empty string. So by placing extra versioning information behind a second null byte, we can end up skirting around this infinite loop bug and the explicit disallowal of extra arguments besides a host name. So, and only newer servers know to check for information behind two null bytes. And older servers will happily ignore the rest of the extra information we send to it. So now that we have a mechanism which we can use to uh, request a new protocol be used, we can take a look at what the structure of protocol v2 is. So by default, Git uses the original wire protocol. And so if you want to use protocol v2, you have to either set protocol.version equal to in your git config, or you can pass it on the command line like I've done here. This will now request that protocol v2 be used regardless of the transport that you're using. If the server understands that additional information that we sent it, then we'll see a different response, this one, which uh, is a capability advertisement. So instead of listing all of the refs, we get this nice uh, listing, which includes a version number, as well as any capabilities or commands that the server understands or is capable of, of performing. The client can then use this capability advertisement to select a command that it understands and issue a follow-up request. So if we're trying to fetch just the master branch, what we can do here is request uh, the ls refs command, which will give us a listing of the refs on the remote. But we have added an additional parameter to this command, which is a ref prefix. This allows the client to send across hints to the server about the branches that it's interested in. Specifically, if we were interested in the master branch, we would send refs heads master. This then allows the server to take that ref prefix and perform server-side filtering of the ref advertisement and only send back the references that we're truly interested in. So instead of getting you know, a million references sent back at you, you can get a handful. So let's take a look at what this translates to in terms of performance with the Chromium repository. So if we do a no-op fetch on this Chromium repository, um, which happens to just be a, uh, a fetch where you're already up to date with the latest master. So all you're doing is a comparison of the hash of the master branch with the branch that you have locally. Using the old protocol ends up taking roughly 10 seconds, whereas using protocol v2 takes roughly 2.3 seconds, which ends up being roughly four times faster. And remember that the Chromium repository has over a million references. So by using protocol v2, you're only getting you know, one or two or three, it's just a handful of them based on which ref prefixes you send to it. Whereas with the old protocol, you're getting a whole set of a million references sent at you. So to recap, we now have a mechanism which we can use to transition protocol versions so if we need to upgrade the protocol version again in the future, we can do that. We also have this mechanism by which the client can give hints to the server, and the server can do filtering of those references before it sends them to us. And it also gives us a little bit uh, more extensible protocol with the ability to add further commands and features, some of which we can do, uh, some examples of future extensions we can make are CDN offloading or and resumable clones, potentially adding rebase on push. Or if you have a partial clone, you might want to still be able to do your grep and log operations, so why not shove that into the protocol as well and have the server do the heavy lifting for you. So that is it. Thanks for your time, and I hope you will try to use protocol v2 here in the future. <laughs>